in a in a bench trial after a jury was waived, defendants were convicted of conspiracy to manufacture amphetamine. Defendant George was also convicted on six counts of using a telephone to facilitate the manufacture of amphetamine. The evidence on commission of the offenses was submitted to the court by way of written stipulation. In this direct appeal from their convictions, the defendants contend that the trial court erred in denying their motion to suppress evidence obtained through an unlawfully executed search warrant. The defendants further contend that the trial court erred and abused its discretion in considering for purposes of sentencing certain statements made by the defendant during the discussions. If, after conducting an evidentiary hearing on the motion to suppress, the trial court found inter alia that the law enforcement officers waited a reasonable time under the circumstances before entering the house. Specifically, the trial court found that the search warrant was executed August 5th, 1983 at approximately 11.15 p.m., at the defendant's residence, that the defendants were in the northwest corner of the house at the time, and that the lights were out in the house when two agents approached the front door, knocked on the storm door, and announced, Police officers, we have a search warrant. The trial court also found that at about the same time, the knock and announce occurred at the front door, officers at the bedroom window saw a form run out of the bedroom. Upon seeing the movement in the bedroom, the officers announced themselves and thrust a gun through the window on the defendant, George. Upon hearing this connection, the agents at the front door broke the glass on the storm door and forcibly entered through the door. If the record clearly establishes the defendant's contempt a contention that the executing officers failed to announce their authority and purpose before forcibly entering the dwelling and that no exigent circumstances were shown the evidence seized against seized must be suppressed as the fruit of an unlawful search the officer may break open an outer or inner door or window of a house or any part of a house, or anything thereunder, to execute a search warrant. If, after notice of the authority and purpose, he is refused admittance, or when necessary, to liberate himself, or a person asking him in the execution of the warrant. Section 3109 requires notice in the form of an express announcement by the officers of their purpose and authority for de demanding admission. Although the burden of making an express announcement is 18, Supreme Court at 1195, Miller 357, U.S. at 309, see United States versus Romaggio, 767, F. 2nd, 730, 732, Tenth Circuit, cert, of, cert denied, U.S. 106, Supreme Court 535, 88, 465. This requirement is grounded in the Fourth Amendment and serves several purposes. It decreases the potential for violence. It protects the privacy of the individual by minimizing the chances of forcible entry into the dwelling, the physical destruction as to the wrong person, and it prevents the physical destruction of the property by giving an occupant time to voluntarily admit the officers. When reviewing the denial of a motion to suppress, we must accept the findings of fact by the trial court unless they are clearly erroneous. United States versus Gay, 774 F. 2nd, 538. The credibility and weight to be attached to the evidence are determined by the trial court. Moreover, the evidence presented at the suppression hearing and the trial must be considered in the light most favorable to the government. There was credible testimony that the officers announced their authority and purpose before forcibly entering the house. The record also supports the trial court's finding that the officers 
waited approximately five to ten seconds before entering. 